Okay, go ahead. Well, I'm Billy Mitchell. I guess my very flattering title I was given was Video Game Player of the Century. At the point that I received that honor, I realized that it was sort of my duty or calling to go out into the industry, push, promote positive, competitive gaming, bring recognition, notoriety to that people and events which push and promote that in a positive direction. Mm -hmm. I had a really intelligent guy tell me once that when you take something very simple like bowling, bowling exists and has its popularity because of the organization, because of the leagues it creates, not because people say, let's go bowling tonight. It's that organization, it's that competition, that competitiveness and even the friendships that come from that where it draws its energy. Take that on the level of video games and I think the potential is so much greater. And so that's a task that I've taken on and it's certainly one that I enjoy, absolutely. How do you say video games has changed from when you first played your very first video game to now? Well, in 1982, when I was really putting up scores and I was searching and searching for answers, high scores, organizations, clearing houses, places that log scores, that created competition, not companies who held a competition on the game that they created. Um, that's not esports, that's a promotion. And I was looking for that avenue. And when I called distributors, they simply pawned me off um, just the way the manufacturers did. And their answer was, we just collect the quarters. There was no organization, there's no clearinghouse, as I said, that exists in other things, such as bowling or pool leagues or any of the major sports. There's tremendous organization. And now, all these years later, gaming has begun to come together, and there is that organization. There are those competitions more and more and more. They began slowly in the 80s, and they've blossomed. I, I really have no idea where they're going to go. But they went from you traveling to the arcade, meeting people, competing, wanting to be the big man in the building, even traveling to other buildings. And the fact of the matter is now today, you don't or you don't have to. You sit there in your house, you play somebody on the other side of the world who you've never met. Um, in some ways, it's better, but in some ways it's far less personable. Mm -hmm. And so in some ways it's not what the right mix is. I guess that's a matter of opinion. What about some people who say there's a big negative effect with video games that cause aggressive behavior in, in the younger people today? What do you have to say about that? Do you, do you agree? I absolutely agree that it causes negative behavior in some people. But that percentage of people that it causes that negative behavior in other things cause that negative behavior in those people too. Obviously, when you're a strong-minded person, when you have balance in your life, you play games, they don't have a negative impact on you. They're on the screen, and when you shut the screen off, they're gone. For some people, they don't have an imbalance, they don't have an addic addiction, they don't cause any aggressive feelings, anything. But in the more vulnerable people in society, I'm sure it happens. I mean, I think those more vulnerable people, if they play football or hockey, get those aggressive tendencies. That's part of a bigger picture. That's part of a group of people that somehow need more care or more help. And probably they should get it. But I will go further. I'll give you a little bit of dirt. The idea that video games, that we cannot create video games that we cannot find a way to entertain people, particularly young people, without an outrageous level of violence, um, is absurd. Of course we can. We can and we should. I openly speak out about the fact that the outrageous amount of violence is not necessary. And I think it's ridiculous. But I'll also defend the other side. The only thing more ridiculous than that is a group of people who think if we take the violence out of video games and movies, 
somehow we would remove violence from our society. That's more ridiculous. Again, common sense and a balance is the way to do it. Um, not everybody has that. Not everybody has that level of responsibility. I wish they did. I openly advocate that they do. Where do you see um, in video game technology, where do you think it's going to go into the future? I guess if I look back from the 1980s and then into the 90s and onward, I guess I could kind of see where video games were going. I could visualize them to this point. I truly could. And now with technology, where they are, I honestly have no idea where they're going to go. I think it's going to a place in a world that is so complicated and so beyond our imagination. Not only do I not think it's something that I can tackle, I don't want to. I think uh, I'm just going to choose to continue to be an advocate in a positive direction and flat out have fun like we're doing at these conventions. Um, there's things that are spoken of that are in the future to come, and I have no idea what they're talking about. None. I'm a reasonably intelligent guy, and I just, I, I can't even find words for it. It's gonna go that far. Do you think the way it's going, it's gonna eventually look so real that it's gonna look as real as you and me are to each other? Oh, 100%. I think it's gonna look that real. I think you're gonna put something on your head over your eyes. You mean holographic technology? You're gonna think you're on another planet. I think you'll do things, I think you'll fight things. I think you'll feel the pain of being shot by something or somebody. Um, I think, I think I can't even describe how real it'll actually be. Almost like I would really expect you, if you're not the victor in a particular game, I would really, I'd, I'd expect you to die and somehow you'll be revived in real life, your real body. I have no idea how far things can go. Wow. Do you get uh, recognized a lot in public, not when you're at an event like this, but just on the street? Um, I get recognized in a seven day week, seven days, every single week, every single day. Never, ever that I go out in public do I not get recognized. Um, are, are, are people usually respectful or positive towards you? Always. I can't remember the last time I was less than... There's been times where somebody is, hi, hello, oh my gosh, oh I know you, oh I saw you, oh, you know, can we get a selfie, a picture, a photograph, or a handshake, or a hello, or a question. And the least positive thing I get is somebody there who truly doesn't know, who never did follow. Um, I actually never have a negative encounter face to face. But the truth is, in my real life, in my real world, not anybody that I portray or play or have fun with on a screen or behind a camera, I, I, I don't have any kindness for somebody. Um, I, get, I get emails at times that are very entertaining. <laughs> uh, very entertaining things I don't repeat, even things that are adults only. But that never happens in the real world. So any weird, awkward encounters? Um, Did anyone ever put you in the bathroom? You know, shake your hand or anything? Because I've seen some interviews with celebrities where they say that's one of their biggest pet peeves. Is they're at like the, doing their thing there. People want to come and shake their hand or ask for an autograph right when they're in the bathroom. Anything ever like that happen to you? No, I've had people say hi to me. I've never had somebody corner me to that point. But by the same token, I can understand those who have had that, but I don't ever say no to an autograph. I don't ever say you have to chart, pay me for an autograph or for a photo. I've never said no. I've never ignored somebody. A long time ago, um, I'd say in 1999, I promised myself I would never unappreciate that positive attention, ever. I never wanted to be that guy. And I promised myself I wouldn't be, and I mean, I've held that promise. And, and the fact of the matter is, so somebody doesn't have to corner me in the bathroom, they can stop me anywhere, and the answer is yes. Okay, I was gonna ask you about the autograph. Um, have you ever asked anyone for an autograph? Have you ever collected them or anything wow. like that? Now that you mention it, 
and I don't think I've ever been asked that question. I don't ever recall. Well, I mean, I remember, gee, was I eight years old or seven? Or when my father took me to the Dolphins football camp and they were all seated at tables and we went around and got everybody's autograph. Yes, I did do that. Um, Bob Greasy was an incredible guy. <laughs> but, um, and I, I learned something from him. He, uh, it was time to go and he had a line of people and he didn't care what they said to him. He was not gonna walk away and leave all these people in a line who came there to see him. He stood there until every single person got their chance, got their turn, and he didn't care what the boss was saying. And he didn't care that the other players were yelling at him and that they had to go and it was finished and it was time up. And that stuck with me so much to the point that when I do these shows, I explain to the people that run the show, if I'm there, and I'm doing something, and there's people that are waiting for my attention, and there's something else starting I gotta go to. I don't care, I will not leave that spot until the line's exhausted. Somebody drove two or three or four hours or flew in to see me, and I'm gonna say, oh, and have the attitude to walk away. I mean, I'm just, that's just not in my personality. And I, each time I do a show, I have to warn people of that, because I, I'll stick to it. That's, that's the answer to your question in an extreme. But as an adult, I don't. I can't ever recall asking anybody for an autograph. And I mean, I'm. I mean, I've been with serious people. I mean, William Shatner and Bruce Willis, and they're all very nice. And uh, I just never work. Is there any celebrities out there that, or people you admire that you haven't met that you would get this really excited about meeting, that are alive today? No. I just. Or is it just something that you're just yeah. used to now? Yeah, I, I think it just doesn't grip, grip me that way. There are people that I have such an outrageous amount of respect for. Again, I mentioned Bob Greasy. Um, and basically it was, but it's because of the life lessons that they've taught me. Whether they realize they taught me that or not. I just have a couple more. Any um, famous people, well-known people ever asked you for your autograph? Um, yeah, I've had people, serious actors, who liked something that I was in so much to the point they asked somebody if they could get something. And they'd mail it to me, and I'd autograph it, and I'd send it back to them. And um, to the degree that it was very flattering. Um, I've walked into a room with actors whose names you would know. When I walked in the room, they, they flipped their lid that I was standing there and they came over wanting to say hi. That's obviously very flattering because you think of the work they, they've done, the good fortune they've had, the notoriety, the name that they've developed, and that they respect you so much to the point that they come beyond that to reach out to you. Yeah, that tells you, that tells you you're working hard and you've done something right. And the final question is, you know, there's a lot of conflict going on in Washington, across the world. A lot of people feel bad about the state of the world. Do you have any um, advice, any way to help them deal with it, to be hopeful for the future? Well, I do do a lot of things for a lot of people that's within my ability. I have this on my saying that I say, I wish I could help everybody. I truly do. But I can only take care of my own corner of the world. And I make it a point that when I ask a question, I try to ask a question the way I would want somebody to ask me the question. When I answer it, I try to answer it the way that I would want them to answer it to me. I think there is far too much emotion put into a factor. So many factors that the truth doesn't matter. They just want to win the argument. And when the truth doesn't matter, when people's well-being doesn't matter, you just want to win the argument or you just want to have that power, then I think you live in a lousy world. Your lousy attitude creates a lousy person. Yeah, there's far too many of them. Um, to be honest, I just avoid them. Any, um, you have a website, anything you want to plug? I know you, you, have a hot, you sell hot sauces and stuff like that. No. Okay. No plug. 
but I appreciate your time. All right, thanks. It, it, it was an honor to do this. I really appreciate it. And I'm happy to get a chance to meet you again. Very good. 